This report is put out to do a assessment of the resources of the park. So we're looking at the natural, the cultural resources of the park, and it gives us the tools to be able to move forward with where the park is at and what they could be doing in the future. Our program has put out about 60 reports to get from different parks around the country. And this is just to get a core sampling of what the resources look like around the whole country. And by the 2016, which is the 100th anniversary of the National Parks, we're hoping to get at least 100 more of these reports out. One of the things they do is they take a look at the natural resources, what the invasive species look like, what the plants that are growing here look like, and they're able to give a score depending on how it, it relates to the way it was historically. This national park got a poor on their on their natural resources, but that's mostly because of the invasive species. But they're not the purpose of today's tour was to be able to get out and look at the successes that the program has had. So where we are today, right now, we're as I said before, this is called the Mauna Loa Strip, and you're seeing forest recovery that has occurred since the cattle were removed in the fifties and goats removed in the in the late seventies. Haukuahivi was twice reduced to a single individual left in the world in the 20th century and the park fortunately was able to collect cuttings and plant them into these areas protected from ungulates and so we now have just under 300 individuals and it was discovered in this kipuka, Pua'ulu, and has not been found anywhere else so there it is. This is a culturally significant area uh, these mesic forests, or upper elevation forests, were considered part of, part of the Wau Akua, or the area of the, of the spirits. And uh, these were sacred areas to the native, and they value Pu'u'ulu as much as, say, an ecologist would. Often when we, we talk about natural resource preservation, we are talking about cultural resource preservation. Uh, this park has got 54 of the federally listed species that they're looking at, and, and these species that are endangered and threatened um, are mostly threatened and endangered due to the invasive species. Through the Silver Sword Foundation, we partnered with State and Fish and Wildlife to collect seeds from those natural populations and plant out, uh, propagate and out plant individuals into protected areas such as this. You guys coming over? Oh, yeah. Of you don't want to see a blooming silver sword. You may do never you? see one again in your life. <laughs> but what's unique about it is that it spends its whole life getting food and energy to make this one blossom. So it can take up to 25 years to produce this blossom. And then once it does, it uh, sets seed and then dies. So it's an incredible story. And so even though they have a poor score, they're able to do these programs with the community, with the youth. Well, these kids that came in, a lot of them were first came into this park with their schools, you know, in fifth graders when they're doing hands-on science education. And the success of this program is these kids have come back and they're now older, they're in high school, and they're still working with the park to help replant the forests. YCC is a group that works with the National Park just to help out the environment and get going. Kason and Emma have Mile over there, which um, is this vine, shrub, but a very culturally important plant. Yeah the process going again like for the native plants so we're trying to get more of the native plants going so we can have actually a future for our kids that we have from, from now. This is one of the success stories that the park has and something that we'd really like to see develop further and we're hoping that with additional funding from, from Congress and additional funding from the administration that they'll be able to develop this program and to make it larger and bring more kids into the, into the park. And the hope is they'll be able to use these reports to move forward and, and to protect and our parks for future generations to enjoy.